Hey there and welcome to CodeSense Workshop. Today we're going to be discussing uh, floats and float lines. I get asked a lot what is the best blue water setup and uh, there really isn't one answer. It's like golf. You don't take just one club to play around a golf. The same with blue water hunting. When you get out there, there's never one rig which is the perfect rig. This is such a broad topic. I'm not going to be able to cover every single float in the market. There's so many good ones out there. But I'm just going to cover some broad concepts and I uh, hope you can apply them and uh, pick the right float for the job. Okay, right. So first of all, um, which float are you going to take on a blue water trip? This really depends on what you're hunting. You know, if you're hunting just doggies, then you're going to take a certain type of float. If you're hunting just wahoo, it's totally different to, to doggies. Doggies, you're trying to keep off the bottom. Wahoo, you're trying not to put drag on them. So... Let's have a look at some floats. Here's the go-to for most people. It's a Rife 3 Atmosphere float. It's a 25 PSI, which is about 1.7 bar. It'll be about 17 meters before it starts to flatten out. And then it just past 30 meters, it'll be um, half its volume. You've got the Rob Allen float, which is 1.5 bar. Um, at 15 meters, will start to flatten out. And at 30 meters, should be about half its volume. And then you've got floats like this on the market now by Gannett, which is a 29 PSI, which is about 1.97 bar. So this at about 20 meters will only start to flatten out. Which, the, which is the best floats out of all, all of these? Well, they've all got different sort of perks and qualities. Um, the Rob Allen, um, although it has the, the least amount of pressure, 1.5 bar, is the lightest of the lot so when you're going traveling this is a great option to have because obviously you know weight's a critical thing the rife one and the gannets uh, they're about the same weight this obviously has a you can put a lot more pressure into it pressure into it i like the valve so that's pretty cool this is a, um, a bladder type Floats and this and the Rob Allen are basically built like a rubber duck. Um, pros and cons, um, this one is maybe a little bit more durable on the outside to a certain extent. Um, but if the bladder goes while you're on a trip, then you either have to have a new bladder or able to repair it. They're very difficult to repair. Um, these, like the Rob Allen, are built like a rubber duck. So you just have a patch kit um, and you patch it on the outside. Looks a bit ugly, but uh, it works. Let's get into basically what rig to use for different fish. Um, most guys always want to know about doggies. So let's start with the doggies and then we'll work our way to other game fish. So you're hunting doggies on a drop off. The drop off at say 30 meters, dropping down to 50, 60 or even 100 meters. What uh, rig do you use? What boy line and float do you use? Well, you can use your standard floats. You can use uh, one of these. Or your Rob Allen or Rye floats, those are perfect. I would link them together and stop the doggy. So you actually don't want to have bungee lines. You want to rather use a static line or a line that doesn't have any stretch. This Rife line is pretty cool. It's really tough. If it does get caught up on the bottom, it's not going to break. So that's a good option because you really want to stop that fish. But because you don't have any bungees, it means your shot has to be perfect. You have to put the spear... In the right place and stop the doggy you can't t-bone it you can't shoot it in the tail you can't just put the spear into the fish you have to, you have to get close and go for the kill shot if you're lucky enough to be diving in 50 to 60 meters that's the bottom going off into a couple hundred meters of water where there's uh, no obstructions then you can use bungee lines and even space the floats out um, one better is have a foam full float at the back uh, because you know the doggies can take the floats down to 100 meters easily and uh, these floats no matter how good they are they're just going to compress and they're not going to come back up but a uh, foamed hard foam full floats very hard to travel with but definitely the best option in deep water let's have a quick look at bungee lines so you get three different types of bungee lines that i'm going to kind of go over you get your your standard big black rubber ones you get your Rob Allen type ones that are thinner and uh, stretchier. And you get these other ones that look like bungee lines, but they don't actually have any stretch in them. Now, these ones are, and I'm sorry to say, pretty useless. Um, they thick, heavy, 
um, hard to dive with and they give you no benefit as far as a bungee line so I'm gonna toss these out straight away these two um, are pretty much the way to go the pro on this is that these are generally very robust but they're very heavy so um, when traveling and you've got four or five of these you must know that you've got a couple kilos these ones are lighter um, maybe not as robust as these um, but really do um, do the job and um, yeah, either work well but remember you can only use bungee lines on doggies when they're able to run when they can go into deep water okay so let's do a quick recap for for doggies um, in shallow water where you want to stop them static line floats um, linked together straight together you want to stop that fish in deeper water where they can run and there's no obstruction then you're going to want to use um, bungee lines um, with bungee lines between your floats and take all the pressure off your gear then you can shoot the fish pretty much wherever you want to in the tail and uh, your chances of landing them are much higher um, but there's not too many places in the world where you can do that let's ha now have a look at bungee lines and floats for other fish marlin sailfish wahoo you definitely don't want to be using static lines you want to be putting bungees on those fish don't run into the reefs so you want to take all the pressure off your off your gear so long bungee lines put bungee lines between your floats take the pressure off i see a lot of guys putting static lines and then a bungee at their float doesn't really make sense if you've got a wahoo running you want to have the bungee line right after your shooting line so as that fish is running it actually the bungee line takes all the shock all the pressure before the buoy actually um, engages on the surface so if you're going to use a static line make sure you put your soft bungee right up against your shooting line that's for wahoo marlin and other big game fish if you're using a blue water bungee line these long ones from like rob allen or these other ones they perfect i would still even put a soft bungee right up against the shooting line especially for wahoo other pros and cons between these two bungees is that uh, if you are having to dive deep all day if you, especially if you're diving 30 35 meters a thinner bungee like this is going to be way less taxing than this these are heavy to dive up and down with um, they are perfect for shooting um, yellowfin and bluefin another tip with doggies is uh, what clips to use these things are pretty useless when it comes to big doggies I've seen doggies just open these things up like scooby-doo wire um, especially down by your shooting line so personally I take all my all my shark clips off and I chuck them away unless they're on the boy and you can't get them off and I replace them with uh, D shackles now you get um, a long D shackle and an elliptical one these are pretty good um, the longer it is it just kind of um, forces the pressure to land up on both sides so it is pretty good you can actually get these from uh, I think Neptonics sell them they're pretty good um, these speed uh, speed links are also um, really good and strong um, but remember you must have a pair of pliers to tighten them up um, that's gonna work really well um, I use these also on my shooting lines um, we attach the shooting line to the bungee so use these and not these okay now remember most of the places you're going to be going to are seriously remote you're not going to just be able to go to a garage and pump up your floats so if the boat doesn't have a compressor or something like that it's really handy to take even a shitty little pump like this hand pump because blowing up your float with your mouth is not good enough it's a 1.5 bar float even you're going, to, you're going to battle even with something like this if you can afford something better buy it take it um, a good um, gauge is really important you want to pump these things up to their max another good thing to take along is a valve screw something like that I don't know if you can see that for taking out valves that's um, to deflate or if they're loose having a valve screw is really really helpful so so it's time to pack and the old adage is if you need them take two if you don't need it leave it behind really really comes into play so with your floats try to take two of everything that's where your lighter Rob Allen ones are going to come into play because you can pack more of them and uh, they're light your lighter bungee lines are good what I would do is I would take um, two long bungees two long static lines um, 
two or three shorter bungee lines um, that you can string between your floats and then that way you're going to have um, enough to be able to put different combinations together. You can either put two floats together in a static line for shooting doggies in shallow water. You've got your bungee lines with, um, with two floats for shooting doggies in deeper water or you can string them out your float lines um, apart, especially if you're shooting big marlin, you know, a 30 meter bungee to your shooting line to your first float, then another 30 meter um, bungee to another float. I mean, you're pretty much going to land anything with that. Um, if you're traveling with a crew of guys, it's really helpful because um, if everyone just takes one extra float or one extra bungee, there'll always be enough in the group um, to help out if somebody loses a rig. So that's it. I hope this has been helpful. I know I haven't been able to cover everything. It's such a big topic. So if you've got other tips and tricks that you use when you go traveling, um, just bomb them in the comments below. It becomes a great resource for everybody. Um, don't forget to subscribe and uh, yeah, we'll catch up with you soon. Cheers.